everyone, welcome to the program Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodi. Welcome to today's broadcast. Today is the 28th day of June 2021. And on today's edition, we'll be looking at uh, Africa's biggest black nation, Nigeria. Nigeria's challenges uh, and the enemies within is what we'll be looking at. And uh, one man, like we customary in-house, we get the finest man within the African continent, so well-educated and well-informed. And on today's edition is no different as we've got uh, Prince Chinedu Obi, who is the National Publicity Secretary of uh, the National Rescue okay. Movement, yeah, uh, NROM. All right, uh, nice to have you in the studio, and uh, thank you very much uh, for beating all the odds, including, uh, you know, cutting short your school runs uh, just to be here. Thank you very much uh, you, for Tony. making that sacrifice. Thank you for having me, and thank you, viewers. All right, uh, let's look at uh, the, uh, today's topic looks at uh, Nigeria's challenges, uh, the enemies within. Uh, it's been said uh, um, uh, a man's enemies usually in his household. Uh, let's look at the challenges facing Nigeria from insecurity to corruption uh, to lopsidedness in uh, appointments and other nepotic issues uh, playing out in Nigeria. Uh, for you, looking at Nigeria's challenges, where would you begin to touch light the enemies within thank you very much you've actually made my job a lot easier you've identified the enemies uh enemies for me in the context of nigeria is almost everybody is here around because we we show enmity to the nation in different forms wow. but the core ones are those ones who have our collective responsibility to get things done right, who in the course of the exercise of their duties do things that are actually contrary to the kind of things we expect them to do. Those you classify as those who are corrupt, those who in the course of their job show some level of nepotism. If a police officer who is supposed to protect Nigerians and you're not protecting them, you're an enemy with them. If you're an army officer who is supposed to uh, protect the territorial integrity of the country and allow people to trick into the country. As we are told today, there are hairs men who are not Nigerians, who are killing Nigerians. You're an enemy of the state. If any role you have to play in the country and you're not doing it the way it's expected of you, you're an enemy within. So, and for me, when I said you find them everywhere, once you beat the traffic lights, whether you're a cutter man, <laughs> whether you're a taxi driver, I see you as an enemy within. Once you move away from those standard operational procedures, you're an enemy within. So you, they are all over the place. All right, uh, let's now streamline it. Looking at uh, our national, for national interest, uh, how would you describe the fact that uh, we've got enemies within and uh, whose responsibility is it to spot these enemies within and probably weed them out? And if that is not done, how can we begin to you know, get it done? How can we force them by legislature, by protest? Or which direction do you think is the direction to go in rescuing Nigeria? Very well. The reason you have leadership is to set a direction. Okay. The average human being or the natural human being by nature is a deviant. Created naturally to be selfish, nasty, brutish in the language of Thomas Hobbes. But what do leadership do? to set parameters that human persons would follow. That's why sometimes you hear leadership by example. If you're a leader, you set the rules okay. that would govern the society. And in setting it, you must leave it. If you don't leave it, people will tend to see what you do vis-a-vis -vis what you say you do. That's where leadership is key. Leadership is that particular instrument that achieves the collective goal. In the case of our country today, you find that, that our core problem is that we've not been able to have a leadership that is patriotic, that captures the vision of the country and delivers it in line with the books. You talked about legislation. Legislation is just a piece of law. You need that to be in the minds of people before you can say is working. You may have all the laws. If people are not willing to obey them, it's as good as wasting your time. The laws, yes, but are they built in our value system that our action naturally respond to those goals that we have set for society? 
So when you don't have that, that's a problem. So I think that we need to have a reorientation of our leadership. Our leadership needs to understand that everything is leadership. When we fail, we fail because our leadership have failed. Like I said to you, the natural human being is naturally deviant. It is the role of government to ensure that we, we, we move within the right direction. Over the years, you find that you have a lot of non-patriotic Nigerians, even at the leadership level. And sometimes you don't blame them. The thing called leadership is something that, uh, patriotism is something that a society gives to the person. Recently in Nigeria, you heard that uh, an American citizen was kidnapped in, in Niger State. Within 24 hours of that kidnap, Americans came and rescued him. You are aware that as of today, Chibok girls, being the first set of children taken from school, are still in captive. And so many other persons in that situation. So how do you expect someone who finds himself in that kind of situation to be patriotic to the nation? So you find that leadership has also failed and gotten to a point that people no longer even have reason to be patriotic in their own country. All right, uh, you, from what you've said, it, it looks like you're putting the blame on the doorsteps of our leaders already. Uh, it's been said that the people deserve the leadership they get because uh, to a great extent they decide who leads them by act of either voting, either selling or buying their vote or whichever direction. Uh, would you say the people themselves deserve better leadership when on their own path They've not done what they, they needed to do, you know, in, in, in order, like uh, making sure the right persons are voted in, making sure the right persons are the persons they pick as their leaders and not go based on ethnicity or the, mo the funds they get from these money bags. Totally agree with you. Uh, when I describe them, as I told you, everyone. Okay. Those Nigerians who uh, during elections cannot come up to vote during elections are also part of the NME. And I'm going to give you statistics around it. All right. In 2019, uh, Nigerian youths came out and voted for the candidate that won B BB Niger mm -hmm. in the tune of 120 million votes. The striking thing is that for each of those votes, every Nigerian that voted spent 15 naira. Okay. That same year, the election that turned the presidency both the losers, all that participated, were within 16 million. Okay. So what it means is that Nigerian, Nigerians had more time spending money in a reality show to determine who emerges than the man who will lead the country that would govern them over the years. Can, so can we put it down to the fact that uh, the electoral process of voting it's also very anemical to the people because you cannot stay in your home and vote. If, if we had, uh, because the voting you talked about, they stayed in their house, sent text messages, and they were sure these text messages will be counted and it will count at the end of the day. But Nigerians are not certain that even when they go out to cast their vote, it wouldn't count. Then talk more of, they don't even have that technology to say, okay, I stayed in my house, I, put, I vote, and electronically the vote is counted. We're still having that not no confidence on INEC to get it done and INEC on its own part have not gone digital to make it easier wouldn't you say that's a factor why this analysis might not blend my party the NRM believes 100 percent that an electronic system is what we require in the electoral system right. that will encourage a lot of people to go to vote that will even reduce the kind of uh rascality we find in the field given okay but even now that we have not gotten to that stage it is also incumbent on us to use what we have as of today would you say we haven't gotten to the stage or the leaders the general leaders political parties like yours and others are not willing uh, to step further because the current situation favors political parties to cheat and you know rig elections i agree with you that the the system is opposed to it you okay. know not that we're not they, not they, that we they can are do it. beneficiaries of this the disorder you find today so how do you think that they're going to change what they benefit from but i think it's also incumbent on the people to demand you said it right every society gets the kind of leadership it deserves my point is okay. if we have a government that you know is not willing to listen to you what do you do you take the you take your feet in your own hands. 
the program we had recently, which I'm sure you participated, where we we're talking about voters' resolution, yes. revolution, okay. is the kind of action we expect uh, people who are Nigerians who find themselves in this situation to take. Recently, we did answers. Okay. For the first time, Nigerians show that, oh, we can come out and get something done. Yes, to an extent, the enemies of the people and the states frustrated the move, but at least we made a point. Can we go extra step to say, in the next election, of course, ICNEC has even started uh, voters' uh, online, registration. Uh, online registration. Can we take advantage of this right now, get a PVC, and for once have the power to sack anybody we want to sack? I am one of those who still believe that whether we say INEC is doing well or not, we expect INEC to do better. Okay. But I tell you, from the elections INEC have conducted in recent times, the, let's take the Edo case, which we make reference to often. All right. You can see that you have an INEC that is willing to change. Recently, INEC called a meeting of stakeholders where they introduced even the online registration. We never had it. So a lot of new things are happening. Yes, we may have flogged them in the past, but once you see them moving on the path of progress, you can give them some support because that support helps them move forward to get you a more a better electoral process. So my thinking is we Nigerians have an opportunity to change our own cause by our own self. If we wait for a government to get it right, they are beneficiaries of the current system and I don't think they will do it. If this you and I who are, <laughs> who are victims of the disorder we have today to use our vote, you may have the argument that votes don't count. Like you said, people will have this. this that notion, system. yes. Yeah. I don't agree completely that votes don't count. You hear what they call vote buying, which has been a problem in recent times. So why do you think a politician will buy votes if he doesn't think it, it counts? counts okay. It does count. From my experience, what happens in a hypothetical bullying booth, okay. 500 persons registered, and on the day of the election, you find just 100, 100, 100 people coming to vote. There's a gap of about 300 and something votes unused. All right. What they usually do, the politicians who write over that and put the 300 up. Mm -hmm. You can now see where 100 people have come to vote and there's a 300 vote that was not used. It can be used to turn the system. So that's where politicians take advantage and manipulate the system. So you're telling us all but of your tricks. But if the 500 <laughs> persons in that yeah. polling unit when to cast their the votes, vote, yeah. they would be there. The second thing we now ask for this is not just cast your vote and go stay there and ensure that the result count. And of course, in recent times, INEC now transmits the results electronically, which okay. is what they did in a do that made the difference. Okay. I think when we begin to do that, the issues of discretion, which you have people do at the point of collision, will be absent and they will begin to have a electoral system that Nigerians can be trusting. Okay, let's start uh, looking at the enemies now, one after the other. In your own ranking, yes, how would you rank the enemies within? And uh, probably give us each of the role you think they play in the, in, in the current situation Nigeria is now? We'll take them one by one. Yeah. Our leadership, okay. one. In, and in, when you in, say leadership, are you talking specifically of the president, the National Assembly, Senate president, uh, the emirs, the traditional rulers, the governors who are very powerful? Are these the leaders you're talking about? To whom much is given, much is expected. So okay. if I'm talking about leadership, I'm starting from the president. Okay. When Buhari was elected, I'm one of those who went around campaigning for Buhari because we said the new sheriff in town is coming and the country will change. The impression most of us had then is that that Buhari we know in the military would come and use the power of the military and stop the rubbish going on in the country. Is that the case today? No. Now, as president, this is... The, only constitution that I've seen that have empowered and given all the powers to one man. The president's power, I'm sure that the president of Nigeria, under our constitution, is more powerful than the president of the United States. So our, our problem begins not just from the presidency now, but the constitution. Yeah, that, that's, that's, the, that's even where the problem is. We have a constitution that was hoisted on Nigerians, that Nigerians did not come down and sit down to say this is a constitution. And of course, you know that constitution is the one that started by telling a lie with the people of Nigeria. Meanwhile, some military guys sat down one place and crafted it. A unitary constitution masqueraded in the name of a federal constitution. Well, how come uh, leaders, political parties, and leaders of thought like you and others uh, did not deem it necessary after how many years to you know, call for the change of the constitution rather oh, than now? There have been many efforts in the past. 
you remember the Waste Committee? That yes, the Waste Commission, yes, yes. There's no document that has come out of this country that is as weighty as that. Good enough to change the situation everybody's talking about. That constitution talked about, that uh, conference talked about restructuring. And the APC government okay. came into power telling us about having to restructure the country. Who leads that government? Buhari. One expects that Buhari should put that on the track. Okay. When the other parties complained, APC went and said they were setting up a committee which was led by Erufai. Yes. Erufai came up with a documents that also told us how to restructure. Have we done it? There's no will of the APC government to restructure the country. And the problem of the country today is driven by it. The constitution is faulty, has brought a lot of... How do you run a constitution that has its eight items on the exclusive list? If I want to generate light in my state as Imo, and I want to take every resource I have in Imo to put light, I'm allowed to put it to the national grid where the corruption that rules the state will not make it even difficult for you to use the blight you have. There are certain actions I can't take in my state. I need to wait to grow at the pace of other persons who don't want to grow at a certain pace. When we had the regions, whatever happened in the West was their cocoa. Whatever happened in the Southeast was their palm oil. The North Granite Pyramid, do you see them again? The lands are still there. It's just that there's this new attitude of go to one unitary godfather in Abuja who dishes out to people. Whereas, we can allow people to grow. You know, when you have that fair competition, what happens is that everybody wants to look good. All right, uh, still looking at, uh, we've looked at uh, the presidency now. Uh, which other enemy do you think the state has, which has helped In that Nigeria order, remaining the National good? Assembly. Okay. The National Assembly is the only organ of government with as powerful as the president is that can call the president so do you support this the call of, that's why how powerful it is do you support this, the call for it to be scrapped i don't think what makes a democracy a democracy is that institution the national assembly but I wouldn't have, you say the way it's run in nigeria we can talk about the way the, it's the, run. The, the, the cost of we can talk of, about of the way it's run. we can talk about uh by camera yes, legislation. By legislation, we can yeah. talk about reducing the number but oh. i don't i'm not one of those who say scrap it if you notice when the military government takes over the first institution the scrap is the national assembly yeah, yeah. they suspend the constitution because these are a, a platforms that should you know create about checks and balance. balances so when you have a dictatorship in a in a civilian disguise you're saying national assembly should not have to. so if national assembly finds a dictatorship i i, I can make it practical in okay. this country today certain quarters of the country are complaining that the president focuses on one area of the country is there's that something true? called is federal character is that true uh, you, you, uh, you unless you're not in nigeria yes it is true in fact some of us believe that this president is a full learning president Rather than the president of all. But, but we had, when Good Luck Jonathan was in power, we had a lot of Niger Delta people in power too. Wouldn't you say it, it is like a Nigerian thing? Uh, you see, which is why I, I, we talk about institutions. If Jonathan uh, Buhari or whosoever is president goes against any of our instant laws, it's a responsibility of another arm in the case in the National Assembly to say this is not how it should be done. That's the sense of oversight. That okay. you oversight the executive to ensure the executive is in compliance with the rules that have been set either by the constitution or any of our instant laws. Okay. Would you would you place uh, a survey by the uh, National Bureau of Statistics? This did place the Nigerian police force and the judiciary as two of the most corrupt agencies in Nigeria. Would you place these two agencies as part of the enemies within? And can you tell me which roles they've played to become enemies of the state? Well, for the judiciary, uh, judiciary used to be the hope of the last man. Used to be. You, that's what used to be. But today, I'm not sure the average Nigerian believes that judiciary is the hope of the last man. Because, is it because of, we've okay. had cases of where, obviously, you see things, everybody expected it to go left and it went right. Like, uh, uh, do you, you have an example? There's so many of them. There's so many of them. Where would I start? There's let's so many see, of let's, them. Like, if you can give you us know, two, let's uh, be sure you're, I, 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 you're speaking too fast. They are, okay. they are legal issues. Okay. So, but the, is, is sometimes you can hold this view and it's different for other person. Okay. But I'm saying public perception now. There are the last is it known The one perception. of your state, is it part of it? Like uh, your state governor who was fought becoming the chosen one? 
that's that's the the, the, the Supreme Court said the, uh, my state governor is our governor. Well, then that's the law. Uh, we can't change it. I don't have any legal instrument to. But I'm saying, okay. generally speaking, there's a perception that that arm has failed us by the kind of rulings and judgment that come out of it. You know, we, we hear cases where for once uh, DSS had to enter judges' houses and the kind of monies that we hear that, you know. So for me, uh, because of the position, the strategic position of that arm of government, it is supposed to be the God that we see on earth. Like, for instance, the Supreme Court, after a decision, yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. One expects the best to come out of them. So if we don't get the kind of ruling we expect from the Supreme Court or the judiciary, I would say that they're one of the enemies I've identified. The police, yes, you hear about uh, extrajudicial yeah. uh, killings. The, the idea of the answers was because of the brutality of the police. People who are supposed naturally to be our friends are sometimes used by the state against the people they're supposed to protect. So they also join as part of the enemy. But get me right. I told you these enemies are all over. It depends on the area you want to see. But which of these enemies have been very enemical, as in those who actually have the influence uh, against the state? Because uh, remember before uh, late Abakari died, he was... He was rumored or alleged to be the power broker in the presidency who made things happen. Uh, if you look at such individuals, how would you describe them? It's really very unfortunate that leadership these days no longer as, aspire to have what you call legacies. Okay. Uh, you have people who are still involved in primitive accumulation of wealth, impunity, nepotism i should think that people who have gotten that level of response should be able to leave a mark of legacy that people can say when they are no longer there in the period of this person oh he did things right but that's not the case it's really unfortunate and of course uh sometimes i also blame the society for it because the society seem to promote such people you notice that someone steals money, goes to his village, he's given a chieftaincy title. How many persons have gone to their traditional sites and they say, no, go, they say you're an armed robber. So, what it, I see... It, when you say the people, can we blame the South, the East, the West, or the North for this same issue? Because we had Rocha Sukocha also carry out the same thing, brought uh, President Zou, uh, of uh, South Africa at a point, uh, give him some honors, built a statue for him in Imo State. Um, how would you describe such a person like Rocha Sukocha, who was your uh, former governor and still in politics? How would you describe him? Well, well Rocha, in my own uh, thinking, is, is he part uh, of the enemies of the state we're looking at? I, I, he, 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 I classified, or I have never made any exception to those in leadership. I've never found someone we can say, oh, is a reference point in the country today. Because okay. go to the state, you find things they would have done better. Yes, among them, there are some that are better. But of course, if, uh, like I said, to whom much is given, much, much is, is expected. expected yeah. uh, I expect the characters we've mentioned to do better than they've done. But in some scale of one to ten, some are still better than others. You know, uh, I, I don't, this is, a, when the public TV, I won't be mentioning people's name and I'm not here to rate anyone, I'm rating leadership. So if you fall in within that category of those who have not given the kind of expectation the people expect of you, so you fall in. All right, uh, uh, before we go for a quick break, uh, I would like you to look at uh, the other sector in terms of the insecurity we are suffering in the country. How would you describe the just fight against insecurity, especially if you take into consideration uh, the, the last... Uh, the, the uh, talking about brutalized era and how they, they were giving soft landing and uh, they were not meant to account for the $1 billion spent for buying arms, which Nigerians have not really seen. How would you describe the president's and the presidency's role in that affair, leaving Nigeria in the woods? I think one of the real areas in this country where corruption has been at the highest level is the military the security agencies because if you carry our budget you find out that the, that's one of the areas that serious budgetary provisions are made okay if you translate it in terms of what you can see it does not reflect what you see on ground 
does not look. You don't forget that in this country, uh, we have Nigerian military that went to Liberia. True. You have Nigerian military that went to Congo. Recently, in Gambia, there was a time somebody was sitting tight. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah, Nigerian Jamil. military. The sign that Nigerian military was coming. Some people had good people. Is that the case today? We're dealing with a rat tag Boko Haram. No matter how you see the insurgency, no matter the level of funding it gets, I would, I, I, it's particularly offending to believe that a, a, a Boko Haram would defeat Nigerian military. You can see how long we've done that. You know, there's no serious, if you ask me, serious plan to deal with it. Don't forget the formal statement of uh, Bacha. It's not my statement that if, and if an insurgency lasts uh, beyond 24 hours, the government is aware, has a hand in it. Are you not worried that this insurgency had stayed longer than it should? And you're, are you not asking yourself whether this is the same military? I don't think there's a concrete plan to deal with this because I believe that the military who have got in this country can deal with this level of insurgency. And don't also forget, like sometimes when we talk about insurgency, we forget also that some of our leadership failures have also helped to brew this. If the monies that are meant to build schools, develop infrastructure, create jobs, are diverted out of this country and the growing youths can't find something to do. They resort to violence. They resort to the kind of insurgency you find here and there. I'm afraid that it's getting to a point that government should do something quickly. All right, uh, in case you're just joining us, you're watching Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodo, and I've got a Prince Chinedu Obi, who is the National Publicity Secretary of the National uh, Rescue Movement. And we're looking at uh, the challenges facing Nigeria and the enemies within is what we're looking at. We'll go for a very quick break. When we return, the program continues. Stay with us. Let's all return to farm. Farming is a good thing. I think you're right. I think we should go back to the farm. Yes, of course, my brother. Over the years, farming has been a source of revenue generation and employment for the nation's seeming population, both in the rural and urban areas, before the discovery of crude oil. Let's return to farm, because farming is like printing your own money. Join us on the program, Let's Return to Farm, 2.30 p.m. every Monday on Liberty Television. This program is brought to you by CBN. from the break you're watching dialogue on liberty television my name is anthony momodi and on today's edition we're looking at nigeria's challenges the enemies within is what we're looking at and uh, we've got a prince chinedu obi who is the national uh, publicity secretary of uh, the national rescue uh, movement and uh, uh, while we're on the break we're, we're talking about uh, changing the narrative uh in 2015 nigerians were hell bent on changing those who governed them because they felt they did not deliver the goods. And uh, that came uh, President Muhammad Buhari with all the promises. Uh, during the program you had recently, you talked about a revolution of 
the voters changing. Uh, but earlier on, you mentioned that all Nigerians were part of the enemies of the state. Uh, so how do you differentiate the enemies, the core enemies, the enemies who are voters, and how do we transform this deep divide we have already, knowing fully well that the country is in bits and pieces? Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, you don't expect a beneficiary of a system to change it. Okay. Now, in the classification of enemies, I've identified the leadership as enemy number one. Okay. The, 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 the downtrodden is just self-afflicted enemies. And f the, the, the idea of that voter revolution is to say, Nigerians, in 2015, okay. you were dissatisfied with the EDP government and you said you need to change. Did you do it? You did. You voted. Yes, an incumbent government was sacked. What it means is that the power to uh, sack any president that is not doing well or any government that is not doing well, any state assembly or has a uh, federal assembly uh, member that is not doing well, is in the votes. So what we are preaching is that in 2023, okay. Nigerians can also do the same thing at all levels, councillorship, house of assembly, chairmanship, House of Reps, governorship, president, senate, sack anybody you don't want to come back with your vote. And how do you do it? The state assembly, the, the INEC has provided for us to do registration. If you're up to 18 years, go get your PVC. On the election day, go and vote. That's the kind of revolution that you think you can. We are opposed to the idea of people standing on the road because you have police that will shoot them aside. We're opposed to burning down uh, national institutions like we see in some states where INEC facilities are born because people are dissatisfied with the system. It's for us destroying the little you have. That if you want to rebuild, the little money we have again will go into the rebuilding. So what do we do? Voters revolution. Use your vote. And I have given you a statistics of 2019 when 120 million youths voted for Big Nigeria. Okay. I can tell you that Nigerians, if they decide to take their destiny in their hand, all they need is 150, 000, uh, 150 million Vote. voters card. Okay. And on that day, go and vote any candidate of your choice that they think that can change. All right. You made a point of okay. uh, our choice of Buhari yes. and In how we're failed. Yeah. I, uh, what, uh, looking at the current crop of leaders uh, who, are still, who have been leading Nigeria since only God knows, uh, do you think Nigerians actually have a choice right now? Uh, if we vote President Muhammad Buhari out, or vote the APC out, so to say. Uh, can you beat your chest and say we've got four credible Nigerians who can be very, very diligent presidents? Uh, for instance, you want to look at someone who makes sacrifices for his people, like Governor Zulum of Borno State and others. Uh, do you think we have men who can actually stand up and Nigerians, regardless of which region, would say, yes, we're going to go with this man? Tony, there's no part of this country whether it is state, whether it is a local government, you can't find a Nigerian with the capacity to lead. All we've had over the years is a poor leadership recruitment process that turn up the idiots, turn out those thieves in the name of uh, uh, governors, in the name I, of I, Is it not still the political parties uh, and stakeholders like you that turn, this, turn out these very thieves and un poor leaders you're talking about? I agree. The political parties yes. do. Is the system so, that generates them? Is th that's what I'm talking about. Can we first now. kick out the political parties first? You can't kick out the political parties. The only way you can get <laughs> leaders yeah, but to can't emerge. We, we can kick them out by, not voting, by not voting parties. who they bring forward. Can't that's the that? point. That's the point we're making. Okay. I'm saying this is the time where we now need to say enough of the nonsense. Come out, look for a credible. There's no way in 18 political parties fielding candidates, you can't okay. find one with the competence. And like I said, Nigerians have the competences everywhere. But that is one step we need to do. The other okay. one is that we need to look at our constitution because the constitution is very key. Right. If you have a bad constitution, even if you have a Jesus Christ, the bad constitution will affect his operation. So it's the two things that we need to do. One, make sure that we have a functional constitution that speaks to the challenges of the country, that deals with all the issues that we all know today, okay. issues of marginalization on part. We're not, look at the local government system. We're struggling to allow local autonomy. government system to be autonomous. Yeah. Look at the judiciary. We're struggling to do somehow to go on strike for God knows how long because we want to have independence. These are constitutional matters. They're not even, but over time, so we've left those things. So my thinking okay. is we need to, first have uh, 
a system, a constitutional system that works, that speaks to the issues, and then Nigerians take the bold step of electing a candidate that will redeem okay, the Okay, talking about the constitution, uh, currently we're going constitution review. Are you satisfied with the public hearings uh, going on across the states? And recently we had the CNG, uh, the Northern Elders Group, one of these groups, uh, CNG, coming out to say uh, the National Assembly should suspend the ongoing review of the constitution and probably first have a referendum as regards uh, uh, the Southeast who is seeking for secession. Uh, looking at those different divides, do you think we're on the right path? And are you convinced with the constitution review, first of all? The Southeast is not the only part of the country today that is seeking secession. Okay. The Southwest, even the Midwest. The, every part of this country have seen marginalization to a point. The Southeast is like the, when you hear, when I hear Biafra, when I hear IPOB, when I hear those agitation, I see it as a metaphor to talk about the Dutch nation of, of, of the level of marginalization we have in this country. And I think, yes, if we want to be fair to ourselves, we can still achieve the restructuring through the constitutional uh, really? amendment process. Okay. Because what are we, we okay how you do it is that the same the national assembly today is the organ of government uh, elected by the people to make laws for us true. if they are true representatives of the people all they need to do is this is the agitation of the people put them in piece of legislation and pass it and that will sa sa save the country the whole of the stress okay uh then uh, going forward uh let's is take that out of the way now. In, in terms of, you made mention of the fact that these persons who are in power currently, uh, because they are benefiting from the process, they would not want a change to Absolutely. occur. So how do you expect the Nigerians, the voters who barely have influence, who do not have the money or the influence to make things happen, how, how can they cause They can change? do it with their vote. I've told you uh, here that votes the count. Vote. That's the only process to change a, a government. I don't believe in mass action because okay. if you do that, what you do is expose a lot of uh, young people to these uh, blood testy uh, military officers who have been told many times to shoot aside. And which have been the part of the problem of this country. We, our leadership find it difficult to engage agitation, you know, the Boko Haram we talked about today was the brutality of their leader. He was killed. A small group that began to create some sentiments around those who believe in what they believe. And today you see where his led us. When IPOP started in the Southeast, they were uh, placard carrying members. Today you hear about ESN. Today you hear about the government. Why? Because we had a state that was unable to manage a simple agitation. All over the world, under a democracy, people have a right to say, I don't believe in what you believe in. And as a leader, you also need to listen to all shades of the opinion. Okay, talking about li listening to shades of all opinion, uh, looking at the current government, how would you describe its uh, ability to listen to people and adhere to uh, court rulings? Especially when you hear Gaba Shehu you hear Femi Adesino come out with statements saying the president said, the presidency says. Do you think that's another problem we're having, those who seem to front for the presidency? How big a problem, how big an enemy are they uh, to Nigeria's growth? Every man on Nigerian street knows that today, uh, if you like, the presidency has been hijacked. You have a lot of people, who, you have a lot of power welding individuals who were not elected by Nigerians and who sometimes speak a recent situation would 17 northern governor uh, south southern governors sat down and came up with a resolution we want grazing rules stopped we want restructuring of the country who was the first to respond to them malami who didn't win any election who was not voted by anybody who if you do a uh, position in terms of competence i'm not sure he's anywhere near the kind of lawyers we have in this country but he was one that overruled the position of 17 elected sub-nationals. And uh, I, I think that's part of the problem. A lot of persons would, and what His Excellency, the President has not done is to cause such persons to order when they do that. And which is why some of us believe that that arm of government has been hijacked. By They've who? not managed By some who? Of, 
by who? Who do you think inside? I'm, I'm not sure. It's my, for me, you've had the word kebab before. They are, and the kebabs, uh, but the kebabs they, they are human beings. Go. Are they no human beings? No, of course, they are human beings. So how come they could be more powerful than the president who gave executive order 10 for local government autonomy and the governors are also saying no to it? Can we also blame the governors as part of the cabal? In fact, after, uh, after the president, in fact, the command, well, I call them <laughs> commander generals. The governors have become so powerful that uh, a president is only Buhari. In fact, Buhari seems to be the stronger president. It's only the president the governors are really not harassed. Under Jonathan, the governors were always on the other side, and the president was on this side. But, but this, okay. this president does not have that problem. But do you think he, they've, he has been forthcoming? You give an executive order 10. It's an executive order. It's like a fiat uh, from the presidency. And you have the state governors dilly dally not agreeing to give autonomy to his executive. Shouldn't order, he have spoken out? Is executive order stronger than the constitution of the Federal Republic? No. The constitution okay. is a grand norm that should define what rule source. We 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 violate that that constitution every day by everybody, including the president. So we we have a lot of impunity going on at all stage, and which is what in recruiting our leadership. In 2023, Nigerians should look at those who will not lord over us, those who will know that as leaders they are servants of the people. Okay, uh, let's move on to some gender issues. Uh, how would you describe the roles of women, the wives of the governors, the wife of the president, and other uh, stakeholders, leaders of thought? Would you say the women have played a good role, or they seem to always voice out when it has to do with gender sensitivity, giving them chance to be? To, to be in power sharing positions. Do you think the women have also contributed or they're also enemies of the state in terms of uh, being the president's wife? Yes, the president's wife at a point spoke out as regards the jackals and the cabals in the presidency, but we noticed at a point she stopped speaking out. Uh, would you say the president's wife has also probably uh, been shut up and while the governors and other women probably are enjoying the loot and not supporting national interest? Well, uh, don't forget, our uh, constitution did not make any provision for. Yes, he did it didn't. But we know, uh, know, we know that women have a very strong influence on Over their, their spouses. Yes, I agree. Naturally, I agree to that. Okay. Uh, to the extent that they don't have any constitutional role, we can only criticize them on moral issues. Okay. Uh, okay. Because uh, if you did not give me any responsibility, it would be unfair. But the to, first lady spoke out several times in the beginning. And to How what extent has it helped? It, at least it informed the Nigerians that things were going wrong. That's uh, talking about the hijacking of the president. Absolutely. Yeah. She, 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 where the first lady, by all standards, had, be, uh, for me, is a gentlewoman who would not want to see the operation. Because, of course, being the person at the receiving end, it knows at the end of the day is the husband, they are going, <laughs> the, the entire country. You remember in her own comment that Nigerians trusted this man and gave him True. power. Now, these people have attacked and that at the end of the day, they will rubbish the man. So, you know, but the thing is, having said that, to what extent did he help us? The only thing he succeeded in doing is convincing some of us that no, there was a problem, that there's a problem. The problem have not changed. So, uh, I think that Maybe if we can think about giving constitutional roles to uh, uh, the women of the, the wives of the governors and assign them with some responsibilities, that would be fine if we think that will happen. And again, it's not even just looking at women from the perspective of being wives of the governors. Naturally, women are better managers than men. So I sure. should think we should give women more opportunity to have be elected both in executive and legislative positions, and uh, I can be sure that they will do better. Okay, let's look at uh, uh, the insurgency in the Northeast. It's been said that several uh, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, uh, have set up uh, their offices in the Northeast despite the uh, security challenges. And they've been fingered as one of those who are also causing the the havoc we're having in the Northeast. Uh, to what extent would you describe them as enemies within too? and other civil society Those organizations. Those ones are enemies outside. They are not enemies within. They are within because... Because we have some they, enemies. They are now within us. But of course, they yeah. are funded by the, the, the elements outside. And I, I think 
uh, part of what our NIA and SSS should know is to be able to do some sort of profiling for these so-called NGOs. They come in the name of donor agencies and they are not donor agents per se. They are either uh, agents of their countries to achieve one particular purpose within the country or the other. I think government should uh, look deeply into it to know actually those kind of uh, humanitarian uh, supports that we need. You know, otherwise, uh, for me, it's a case of someone steering crisis and posing a good man in the name of uh, a humanitarian. All right, uh, let's uh, just you, you talk, still talking about the NGOs. Uh, how can we separate uh, those who genuinely support Nigerians, especially those who genuinely support people of the North, uh, Northeast who are actually going through crisis? Uh, how can we separate them from those who get funding from outside the shores of Nigeria? Well, uh, there are some reputable international NGOs that are known uh, who over the years have played key roles, the Red Cross, the, quite a good number of them. Would you put Amnesty amongst them? Amnesty, uh, there are so many, uh, in recent times, you have a lot of uh, theories. You know. But do you agree <laughs> that Amnesty is fronting for... I don't or do, have or do you any... think the federal government is just not being, uh, not wanting to be told the truth to their face? Because every time there's a, a survey, an index that shows Nigeria corruption index or whatever uh, poor living standard, the federal government is quick to come out to say no, uh, the statistics are not true. But Nigerians who live within know that these, these statistics are real. I, I think if you're looking at it from that perspective, I think that Niger the government should, from the beginning, know between the NGOs that enter this country, the ones that are good and the ones that are bad. I don't agree that it's only when reports that are not in your favor, favor yeah. that uh, that you can say there's something wrong. I'm sure that if that same agency comes tomorrow to say, I right, under the new index, Nigeria is the best. Uh, the, the same people will give them an award. So, But that's not, I don't want to use government assessment of them as a parameter. I'm looking at it from even perception. There are times there's there's a lot to perception. Okay. At whatever time you're doing something and people are beginning to have some uh, theories around it, you know, you, you need to also look at it from a second eye. But there's need to also encourage those who are actually real humanitarians who are trying to support the level of devastation we have in such areas. So sometimes it's even very wrong to make a general statement that will affect those ones with deliberate, uh, concerted uh, humanitarian efforts. Okay, uh, as we reach our business end of the program, let's look at some of the key uh, well, I say solutions uh, you think uh, can help us. Or yes, you have mentioned some in the past, but as uh, the, uh, a very strategic person in the national uh, rescue movement, how... How important is it for genuine political parties, bodies like yours and others? Uh, probably, do you think it's time for them to come together uh, and probably, I don't know, probably calling it the, the third, alleged third or fourth force uh, to cause this change? How realistic is that? It's not impossible. Uh, Tony, what the country needs is captured in the vision of the NRM. The first is compliance to the rule of law. The other one is shared peace. There needs to be a peaceful environment. The other one is shared productivity. And then uh, you, you, you have uh, sh shared productivity and then you have shared uh, productivity. When, when, when a country is structured in such a way that everyone has faith in it, everyone believes in it, there is justice, fair play, equity. It's takes care and takes away some of these issues that we've been talking about. But how can we get shared peace uh, when there's so much injustice in several uh, regions that uh, people are still crying about? And talking about shared productivity, how, how possible can we get shared productivity? Because the people of this uh, South South, for instance, says 13% derivation uh, formula, not fair enough for them producing uh, uh, the oil and also the devastating effect of the production going on in the Niger Delta. Uh, looking at these two issues, how realistic is what you're uh, yeah, trying to push? Uh, when we talk about shared peace, well, uh, it's still incumbent on a well-structured system, under a federal system that runs on the fiscal federalism, where the Niger data you're not talking about now would not have any reason to blame 
the presidency for devastation in the place because they are allowed to control the resources of the place. Okay. But as it is, you don't slap a man and expect him to be happy. You come to my territory, take 100% of resources, give me what you call 13%. And with all the devastation, the 13% does not speak to the issues on ground. So I think the solution is fiscal federalism, let everybody go back home and find what he can produce within the area and pay to the center. That's what is done in normal federal structures. Okay. All right. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, uh, I would like to just know your advice to specifically the youth, especially uh, those who are in, within the voting age. How important is it for them to, you know, get prepared ahead of uh, 2023? First is I plead with Nigerian youth not to take the laws into their hands. Yes, they have every good reason to be angry because they've had government that was not planning for them. But this is the time for them to take their faith into their hands using their votes. I gave you statistics that covered the But we still have a problem of not knowing the credible ones to vote for again. Because oh, we're, we're not. We're, the use okay, can, can begin you, now. Can you, from your top of your head, at least name four Nigerians you can say, yes, these four Nigerians have. In every part of this country, we can find good Nigerians. Let me mention anywhere. You just talked about a found, governor in uh, uh, Ampara, okay. I mean, in, uh, in um, Zulum, Zulum, who yeah. is who is fighting insurgency, and we still make good references of him as a yeah. good governor. In the south, in the southwest, you have uh, the likes of Makinde, who a lot of people are saying are doing very well. Uh, I, I'm not using my own statistics. I'm using the statistics of uh, what I've read in the papers. Okay. You have in the southeast, like somebody called Pitobi. Nobody had beaten his records for of all the governors that have been governors in that area. Okay. You know, so go to any section of this country. There are lots of okay, people. With all these uh, figures you've mentioned, uh, both of us know in clear terms that uh, ahead of 2023, we know of certain politicians who have been in the system, for, who are still gunning for the presidency. For instance, uh, Ashwaju Bola Tinubu is someone who has been fingered to likely throw his heart into the ring for the presidency. What would be your advice to such men? Do you think they deserve, do you think they really love Nigeria enough to want to come back or want to seek for presidency looking at their age and the issue of health wise? We know that this current president, technically every six months has to be in the UK for medical checkup. Uh, do you think we deserve another old man coming to lead us regardless of the money bags or the bullion van he has gotten how would what role would the political parties like yours and others play to stop such a person or discourage such a person well uh, my attitude to uh, age and leadership yeah. is that ideally the older someone is the wiser he should be the more compassionate he should be a country like the well, US has, today, it, has it been the it, case it has in not Nigeria? been the case in Nigeria okay. I'm making a prime all right okay uh, a country like the U.S. today is led by a man of about 78 it, years yeah. old, Biden. Biden. yeah. And Biden strikes me like a man that knows what he's doing. So it's not about age. We also have a lot of young people in this country who have had powers that, of course, if you look at them as references, you won't want to give a young man the opportunity. So for me, credibility of leadership has nothing to do with the age. But you mentioned someone but in but particular. The, but technically, uh, we need someone who is vibrant. Technically, who, someone like yeah. Ashwaju is someone that... I can give the credit of having run a good Lagos state. I remember under Obasanjo, when Obasanjo seized the funds of Lagos state, yeah. he was creative enough to make a good, uh, make the state run running, even without running. the foreign subvention. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the national subvention. Sure. Over time, structurally, you can see him as somebody who is a builder. He's built a lot of men, he had a lot of people all over the place. But you need my candidate opinion? I would rather support that Asiwaji looks for people within his system to hold the position and you know, he shouldn't be president, in my candid opinion. But whether he's a nice guy, not I've given you a reference of how good he's done as governor, but I don't think we need presidents that would be spending more of his time outside the country. We need presidents that will stay here with all the energy to work, that understand the issues, that are part of the, who have felt the, 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 the problem of Nigeria and are passionate to deal with it. We don't need people who will be uh, today in Nigeria, the other day, trying to deal with all medical issues. Yes, it's natural. We all get old one yes. day and we all face True. the same situation. So True. when I'm as old as that, I won't want to bother myself with the presence of Nigeria. 
All right. Uh, look, look, looking at uh, this other issue in terms of uh, finally picking the right persons who is going to lead Nigeria, uh, what would you say in terms of uh, the political parties now? You know, I talked about merger. Is can can we see that? Is is there a possibility it's, in that it's, horizon coming up? It's not impossible. Out? We they will they, they well, you don't forget. First of all, political parties have their own vision. Like do, the NRM, do, 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 would you say the NRM can, in the last election honest, refused do, to do, do? Do you think Nigerian political parties have vision? I, do, I don't think they have vision. Every because, political because if party, they have vision, they won't be cross carpeting at it's will. It's not true. Every political party has a vision. I'll tell you something. Do they have a vision or uh, vision? We went for a program okay. once in the uh, in NIPS, and right. NIPS said. Uh, they want political parties to fraction their programs and activities in line with the national vision. And I said, wait a minute, do we have a national vision at all? And at the end of the day, you look at the constitution, the, 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 uh, the, the principle, uh, uh, principle of uh, state uh, okay. uh, policy. Yeah. It's purely a vision of the country. The same way, there's no party you pick up the constitution, you will not see the, All right. the vision of the... But the, what is the case is sometimes because we leave those documents and do something else. else. All right, uh, time not our friend when you're having fun. It's been amazing talking with uh, Prince uh, Chinedu Obi, who is the National Publicity Secretary of the National Rescue Movement, uh, making their own stake towards changing uh, the bad lot of Nigeria and taking Nigeria out of the woods. I want to say thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and I hope uh, we will call on you next time. Probably join us so that we can further look at uh, ways to rescue Nigeria properly. Thank you very much. We're there to rescue Nigerians. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Nigerians, for listening. All right. Uh, that's how we call it a wrap on the program Dialogue. My name is Anthony Momodo saying thank you for being part of it. This is Africa's finest. Thank you. <laughs>